I am Christy Bryant with the Best Boston Living Team at Keller Williams Realty, and today I have Amanda Rollins. Amanda, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Amanda Rollins with Trend Design Build of Austin. And we, we do. Have... Go, ahead. Go ahead. Yes. I was just going to say we do complete remodels and um, decorating and design and all those good things. So. Here's some tips today. Amanda does a great job, and we have worked together on several projects now, more than probably several. And uh, mm -hmm. she did my home as well, as one of our guests today also mentioned. She did a, an amazing job. So I love Amanda's work. I feel very comfortable in recommending her, whether you were wanting to do something small or something big. I also am very keen on having the discussion about how it will improve the value of your home, whether you're looking at selling tomorrow or you're wanting to enjoy the investment and enjoy it for a long time. So today we're going to be talking about bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Bathrooms. That's right. Love um, bathrooms. <laughs> and we've called it um, Tip Talk because we do want to stay in, in touch with it, what's going on and what's trending. And so um, I've taken on about five tips to give you today that will, if you're thinking about redoing your bathroom, or even if you want to update your bathroom that you have right now, you can use some different colors and different things to make it look more up to date. So starting with that, um, I'd like to talk about black. Uh, you know, we've all had gray as our go-to color in the past, and we're finding that black has become the new hot color. And we can use it in different ways. We can go ahead and you want to go ahead, Christy, and start with the first slide. Um, vanities um, is a good way to start with black in your bathroom. And let me just say real quickly to white walls. Um, we've always had seen a lot of gray in the past, and now the trend is going towards more of the the white walls look, and even throughout your house. Um, but anything with black and white contrast is really, really good. Um, so like I said, vanities are a great way to start. Uh, they've used it also on the door here and even on some window frames, it looks really great. The black and white tile. Um, lighting is the next place to, to, to uh, use some black. And it needs to be uh, the matte black finish not the old oil, oil rubbed bronze. We want it to be the matte black. Um, we're seeing it in a lot in mirrors and then also in plumbing. And there's some other options too for plumbing. I'll get into that in a few minutes, but um, plumbing and hardware. So um, those are areas to use that, that stark black and white contrast. I have, to, I have to tell you a little story real quick. I first did my bathroom at, in my own house in the white marble. This is like a dolomite white marble. It's a real marble. And I put on the black hardware and at first I thought it was just too much. You know, it just didn't seem to look right. But if you try it, um, give it, give it a chance because when you start bringing in the other features, it really softens it and it just looks crisp and, and really pretty. So I love it. I've grown to really love it. Going to the next one. Here you, you can see that they really used a lot of black, black, black paint on the wall behind the mirror. Um, they were in the shower with the black frame and they've also used the black tile. And I'll get into the wood tones in a minute, but that's a really popular look too, is to use that black with the natural wood um, and black hardware. So, so pretty. Um, I mentioned that the plumbing, we, we're using, we're seeing a lot of matte black, but Gold is, is a really hot ticket right now, as far as where to use it. The mirrors, plumbing, hardware. And don't be afraid to mix your metals, because although you know they've used some black matte pendants here or lighting here, it looks great to really make your mirrors shine and, and focal point on the, the mirror and the plumbing fixtures. And then it looks sharp how they wrap the, the front of the vanity there with that white marble. And here they've just used gold everywhere. I mean, they've used the lighting, the mirrors, the plumbing, shower, everywhere. And I'd like to point out the wood flooring. In the past, in the, the previous tip talk that we gave, um, we talked a little bit about flooring. The flooring was darker for, for the longest time, and now it's gone into more of that natural wood tone. It's kind of a lighter blonde wood is what we're seeing. So it's really pretty there. 
And here you can see they've used the, the black. This is actually a tile that's behind the mirror. So they've tiled the wall, put the gold pendants, the gold mirror, and the gold plumbing trim. And even you can see underneath the sink, there's fixtures that you can put mm -hmm. the, where it all blends pretty together. And they brought out that gold um, industrial look of piping underneath the sink. And that industrial sink lends me to my next tip, which is about industrial sinks, the use of those. So go to the next one, Christy, please. This one um, almost looks like something you would have seen in grandma's laundry, you know, closet. But um, this trough style industrial sink is becoming more and more popular. And if you want to, you can even do a DIY where you can use a, a pop of color underneath the sink where it's painted black. Um, I've seen people put maybe a teal blue or a pretty green or something like that to give it a little bit of life in the, in the kitchen, I mean, in the bathroom, sorry. Um, and again, that contrast with the black and the white just looks so sharp, um, black flooring. I think on the next, yeah, this is where they use the matte black frame for the industrial sink, the stand. Um, again, a black and white tile on the floor, white walls gold mirror, gold pendants, and um, just looks very clean and up to date. Real pretty. And then we have the, the next last one. one. We had talked the, about the mixed metals. So mm -hmm. high end right here, having the mixed metals. Absolutely. Mixed metals is extremely popular. And we're seeing a lot of the, the black and the gold. And you can throw in the brushed nickel too. So if you want to update your, your bathroom and you don't want to go through all the expense of maybe changing out sinks and faucets and that kind of thing, just little touches here and there will give it that up-to-date feel. So I love even how they bring in the, the natural elements of the wicker. Right. And you can do it with wood too. So the next slide, oh, this is um, tile. So it brings us to our next little tip. Um, tile, the most popular right now, this is an encaustic tile. Anything that looks kind of geometric is a great way to go. They used a porcelain, probably a 24 by 48 uh, porcelain tile on the wall that looks like marble, but that encaustic uh, tile on the floor is, is trending. Encaustic is, a, is really a cement tile. So it's heavier, it's thicker, it has more of a sound buffer to it. Um, and it comes either painted on top or you can either do the, the, where the color is through the tile itself. So go to the next one, Christy, please. Chevron. Um, Chevron is very, very popular. You can use it on the floor. You can use it on the wall. You can use it as a backsplash. This is shown in green and I'll get to colors in just a minute, but green and blues are, are trending. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a few minutes, but Chevron is classic. It looks great with that black window there and that white tub, just gorgeous. On the wall here is a hexagon. And it, I thought what was interesting about this is they took the hexagon behind the vanity, uh, back along the toilet and through the bathtub and wrapped it around, which elongates that bathroom, makes it look bigger. It's probably even cleaner, uh, easier to keep clean. Uh, and then they paired it with that geometric look on the floor. Just looks sharp and up to date, real pretty. I wanted to show you another, just a, this is a timeless classic marble hexagon floor. Um, and then notice the wood elements in there and I'll get to that in a minute too. But if you can pair any kind of wood elements in your bathroom, uh, it, that's what's trending. That's what's in style and it's easy to do. So. Next one, Christy, please. Another geometric on the floor in green. Um, don't be afraid of color. I mean, we've all just seen the gray and everything, but green and blues are trending. Um, just looks very different, very sharp. And also notice the subway tile. They laid it in kind of a unique pattern. It's not really a herring go herringbone, but it's, um, or a chevron, but it's it has a little turn to it, the way they laid it out. It's great to do stuff like this because these are inexpensive tiles and the way you lay them or the way you set the tile makes it look a lot more expensive, a lot more interesting. Also notice the gold um, plumbing fixture with it. It just looks really good with, a, with that dark green, you know, gold looks great with blues and greens. So, and, purple. 
and purple. I know. I mean, this, I don't know that I would have personally chosen this, you know, if I saw this in the store, but I mean, to see this laid on the floor, it just looks great. Um, the, the white and the green and with the accents of the black. I'm going to touch on this in a minute too, but notice the shape of the mirror. Um, you know, a standard rectangle mirror is always timeless, but we're seeing mirrors changing in their shape. Um, just something different. It could be asymmetrical, it could be something like this, where it's just an arch on the, on the top. But again, they use the gold fronts on the, um, the hardware on the, the vanity. They use the gold pendant there, lighting, and the gold um, plumbing fixture. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, lastly, the fishtail, the scaled um, fishtail tile. I mean, it, when you look at it, it almost looks like wallpaper. And I like to use it also where you just maybe wrap or tile half of the shower or half of the, the bathroom with this tile. And, um, and then put something on the bottom that's more plain, like maybe the marble in this case. And it, it has a wallpaper look, look to it. Something interesting about something like this too, is you can use, instead of using like a white grout, you could use a metallic grout, say a gold. And again, it makes it look more like wallpaper. It elevates the look and it gives something that's just a little different to the room that you don't expect. So. Pretty. Okay. Um, changing here a little bit on the tips, uh, going into wood tones. Wood, wood in the bathroom has become very popular and you can use it in a multitude of ways. Um, in this bathroom, obviously they use it on the floor and there's that light colored natural wood tone. Um, and they incorporated a few tiles sporadically. Um, you could even do it where you have maybe more tile next to the vanity where there's a higher incidence of water and then let it just kind of trickle and, and come more sparingly as you exit the room. That would be an interesting look. They use the encaustic tile on the wall. Um, that also comes in a porcelain, so you don't have to use that heavy cement tile, that encaustic tile, so you could use a pattern tile on the wall. But I like the way they did it here because it, it looks like wallpaper. Um, it's clean. It just makes the bathroom look bigger because you use more of it there. And then vanities too. Um, and this, yeah, on this slide, the natural vanity is where the wood comes in here. Um, notice the asymmetrical, the, the diamond-shaped mirror. Um, I'm, I'm assuming if this bathroom was remodeled, that where you see the shower drain is probably where the toilet used to be. And where that freestanding tub is, is probably where the normal bathtub used to be. Because it looks like it's about a standard six foot opening. So just know that as you're wanting to upgrade, maybe you're wanting to do some things to the house to make it look more fresh and up to date. It's so easy to change the configuration around of your bathroom. Um, so putting a shower like that, and I don't know if you can really see it in this slide, but there's a, a partition piece of glass that's about a half glass. So you basically, you walk around that glass, take a shower, and also it's on the same side as the bathtub. This has become more of a popular thing to do where you incorporate the shower and the bathtub together in the same space. So, real pretty. If you don't wanna to commit to a lot of wood, um, say on your floor or in the vanity or something, something as simple as a plant stand, just something with some wood element, looks, looks really great. I think that next slide, Christy has um, even some baskets and a little stool there, a shower stool. Uh, it just makes it look so much more up to date and fresh. And this picture, uh, just something as simple as putting paint on the door, you know, just a, a blue or green or some, some, even a darker gray, just paint your door where it's different from the walls and not that just standard trim of maybe just a basic white. It just makes it look a lot more custom. And I like the way they use this black hexagon tile on the floor too. It grounds the room and it, with all that white on the wall, it just makes it look clean and just new. I love the barn door as well. I really love barn doors. I think they're underutilized. Yeah, yeah, if you have the wall space, they're great. Um, 
Now this is probably a 24 inch or maybe even a 30 inch and I bet that toilet is probably behind that, that door there. Mm -hmm. Be a great use of a barn door. Okay, um, I added this because we've probably all seen a floating vanity. They're becoming more and more utilized. Uh, they have a lot of pros and cons to them. I'm not, not cons, but just a lot of pros to them in that it's easy to keep the floor clean underneath. Um, I like to put a little bit of a dimmable light underneath them. If you get up in the middle of the night and you maybe don't want to turn on the bright lights, you can always turn on a dimmable light underneath that vanity. It looks really pretty. Um, notice also the mirrors are not a perfect rectangle. They've got a little oval to, to them. And the pendants are in the, um, like a brushed brass as well. So, and then there's that black wall. So, good. This one I think is really, Pretty in that it almost has that vintage style to it, and it's it's probably mounted on the wall, and then they have the the legs that look like it's actually a, a piece of cabinetry. So, and then that geometric pattern on the floor, that tile, just looks really sharp and clean. Notice the subway tile, how they laid that. Subway is one of those things that you can um, use it in so many different ways. You can use it, you know, put it in a chevron pattern. This is called a vertical straight leg. In other words, everything's lined up as opposed to maybe a, a uh, offset brick leg. We, it almost looks like the, the way we all, we've probably all seen it in our kitchens before where they're not really lined up. So gives it more of a model. What's most likely the countertop uh, material? Is that a quartz or? Well, yeah, that looks like a prefab to me, something that's been prefab, but uh, quartz material is, is, I think is, probably one of your better choices for the bathroom or the kitchen. It's man-made. Um, there's a couple of companies here in the U.S. that manufacture it here in the U.S. We don't have to pay the tariffs. You know, a lot of the materials coming abroad. Um, so, and it lasts forever. You can't, you, you can pour red wine on it. You can put makeup on it. I've taken fingernail polish off of it before. You can't mess it up. So, and as far as cost, it's relatively, I think less expensive than some of the man, um, more real materials. So. Yep. Um, this is a free floating vanity that I wanted to show you because the, the marble, the quartz or marble is actually wrapped around the front to form the vanity. It's, it's great in any, any size space, but particularly in a small space like this. So it makes it compact and, but it looks bigger. So, and I like the way they use the gold accent there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now in this bathroom, I want to bring up color again because we are seeing more and more blues and more and more greens. And if you don't want to commit, I mean, this, this is a lot of commitment. This is a navy tile laid in a chevron pattern. It looks gorgeous with the gold accents there. Um, I mean, even, if you have a small bathroom, this would be a great opportunity to make your shower look bigger um, and use that industrial sink that they've installed here. Um, it looks clean and fresh and open. Um, I have a, let's see, the blue, I always get these two mixed, but the blue is known for giving you a sense of relaxation. Whereas green gives, has a tendency to give you more of a feeling of wellness. So. I thought that was an interesting pick. I didn't know that before. But go to the next one, Christy, please. I am curious on this. Is that a drain sure. that we're seeing? Is that a what? A drain. Yeah, that's a linear drain in the back of the shower. Um, usually there's an elevated shower floor, which underneath is where the drain will actually, um, all the water will flow into a normal type drain that we're used to seeing. But the great thing about these linear drains is you can put them on any side of the bathroom. And when you're standing there underneath the shower, you don't feel like you're standing on top of a drain. So, and they look good. They look really pretty. Um, if you don't want to commit to blue tile, you could always paint your, your bandy blue. Um, or even using some blue, t blue towels or blue accents or something like that. But bringing blue into the bathroom right now is, is really on, on point. Um, 
these mirrors are beautiful, a little different with the gold and the and mounting the sconces in between. Mm -hmm. It's real pretty. And you can see there they mix the metals. Yeah. They they use brushed nickel faucets with the gold hot hardware. So it's very different. Looks really nice. Now here's the green. Here's the popular green. It's kind of a hunter green. Um, this bathroom looks phenomenal. I mean, the green wall, industrial sink, uh, which is not expensive. Uh, they brought in some wood cabinetry for their wood element. They've got the black and white tile on the floor. And, you know, normally you wouldn't think that that mirror would go with that industrial sink, but look how great it looks. It looks really pretty. And then, of course, the pendants on either side or the, the lighting sconces on either side. Very nice. Okay, so again, if you don't want to commit to a lot of color, you could put a little green um, on, your, on your walls. Uh, you can see that they use the black hexagon tile on the floor. And then this leads me to the next color, which is going to be rather surprising. They used a pink bathtub. Pink is coming more and more popular. This pink tile, I mean, how they've paired it with the white marble and the black um, hardware, it, it just looks stunning. So, and the gold accents on the plumbing, on, on the faucets, um, very, very pretty, different. So, who would have known that pink would have come back? <laughs> and that pink chevron tile, beautiful. You can see the, the light uh, blonde wood for the bandy. And then they've added the, the gold mirror, the gold pendants. It all comes together. I have uh, developer clients who are rebuilding a home in Western Trails, and it has my grandma's pink bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I know. A lot of people are, are, you know, I have a cousin, and he has pink tile in his bathroom, and I'm like, don't, don't pull that out. We can, we can, we can work with that. So, yeah. yeah. This is gorgeous. It is. Really. It is. It's fresh. I mean, I can even picture, well, any, any home, but it, I, my first thought, of course, is a little girl's bathroom, but um, I can see this in a powder bathroom or something. Really nice. Okay. Um, of course, black and white, but I, I put this tile in because I want to talk about tubs just for a minute. Freestanding tubs are, are trending right now. Um, and they they don't have to have the whirlpool. They don't have to have all the bells and whistles. Just a, a nice soaker tub. They come at all different price points. They come in all different shapes. Um, and again, you can see the glass in this slide where it shows the shower and the tub are in the same area. And then they brought in the wood elements that gives it that nice spa feel. I love the plants in the back. I mean, I bet that's really relaxing in that tub. I think this is my favorite out of all the uh, bathrooms. Really? Showing. Oh my God. Yeah. I love it. You know, we see so many houses that have this shape of a bathroom or something and, and how they wrap the, the tile up on the ceiling. It's just uh, very clean and fresh and yeah, love it. It's gorgeous. Yep. I put this one in because I love the stone behind the bathtub. You know, it, it we, we always expect tile and, and things like that, but I think just something like this is so different and so nice. Um, this doesn't have to be real stone. This can be a, a, a faux stone. And there's all kinds of products now that they're, they're great. You can't even tell that they're not the real stuff, but they, they look, they just look great. They go up easy, they, you know, they add some insulation to the house. And again, they get that different texture. And that simple little beam above, it really adds another unique look to, to this bathroom. Um, and then again, they've used the black and whites. You know, and in this case, of course, the gray on the floor which still looks great. It's really good. I put this slide in because this configuration, I cannot tell you how many bathrooms I walk into. And this is the layout. You know, we've got the corner, what used to be the garden tub with the, sh with the shower and then the vanity. And so many people think that they can't put a freestanding tub in, but we can. Um, I would have probably tilted that, that bathtub a little bit, made it more catty corner in the, in the corner, 
or I would have put a round tub in there, which would have been really, really pretty. So, but I, it can be done if you, you know, if you want to try a free, free swinging tub. So. I love the chandelier over the tub uh -huh. as well. Yep. You know, I have to tell you, that's not to code. <laughs> You have to have eight feet between the bottom of your chandelier and the top of the water. So that's kind of a no, no there, but we could bring that out into the middle of the room and you still have that look. You still have that real pretty look. So yeah. Mirrors. This is just where I want to touch a little bit on mirrors. Um, any kind of irregular asymmetrical look is trending. Um, they've improved mirrors so much now. You have backlighting, they have ports for USB you know, uh, chargers, all kinds of things in lighting, anti-fog. Um, this could be a medicine cabinet for all we know. I mean, there's a lot to them. There's a lot of options here, but it looks up to date and fresh. Looks great. Uh, lastly, last tip is I wanted to touch on wallpaper. Uh, wallpaper is trending huge. I mean, and in different types of wallpaper, but in this case, this is a mural. I love the bohemian type beaded chandelier here um, with the wood stool and the black floor. It just looks so great. I mean, this does, even though it's wallpaper, it doesn't look like grandma's wallpaper. It looks really great. Anything with botanicals, um, birds, animals, um, things like that in it is trending. Really, really popular. Go to the next one, Christy, please. Uh, geometrics. And again, you don't have to just put it in one spot. Go ahead and you can pull it across the room or maybe even just put it behind your vanity, whatever you want to do if you want to give a little touch to it. Um, notice the wooden vanity. We've got the gold sconces, the gold plumbing. We've got an irregular mirror here. We've got a black floor and we've even got the jute rug, which is more like a the basket, and the, the wood element. So all these key components come together and gives your bathroom a fresh look. And then lastly, anything bold, bold wallpaper. Um, this probably has a metallic little sheen to it, I would imagine, paired with that blue paint on the back. Um, that way you can just have a little focal point. If you just wanna try a little bit of wallpaper, it looks awesome. So, and you know, the wood elements that are, are there, the metal mirror and everything. So easy to do. Yep. Okay, thank you, Amanda. So we sure. would love for our participants, if y'all want to put something into the chat or if you would like to ask a question, I am going to unmute y'all. And you are welcome to ask questions. I think you'll need to unmute yourselves. If you would um, say who you are and then what your question is. And if you want to go back and look at a particular photo, a particular slide, let us know. I see a hand raised. Let's see. <laughs> Who's got their hand raised? It will not show me. Go ahead and talk. Oh, it's Celia. Go ahead, Celia. So I love that really nice, clean look. Uh -huh. but I'm curious about storage. It's a good question. What do you have in mind, Celia? Did you have like for towels or, um, you know, makeup? What What were you thinking? Right. Um, so. In my bathroom, just for me personally, I do have a small section for towels, but then mm -hmm. contact solution, makeup, first aid kit, you know, all that, yeah. all that junk. Right. Um, I like to, I have, I have some custom, I, I cheat a little bit. I have some custom um, cabinets that I always have made. And I usually try to suit the cabinet to my clients and, and go through that with them and try to figure out what they need. Um, like if this is a good, a good picture. You can see where there's a drawer underneath the sink vanity and a cabinet on the top. 
Um, so that would make great use of storage there because you could probably put shampoo bottles or toilet paper and then in the bottom drawer, put things that are more like towels or whatever. Um, but to answer your question, there are ways to come up with a solution based on the configuration of your bathroom and uh, where your space is. You know, it, we could do anything from take an antique cabinet and maybe move the shelves around or something and put that against the wall in your bathroom. I've taken um, iron stands. I love to do this because my husband hates to get out of the shower and, and go for a towel. And I hate shower towels that are just thrown over the top of the shower. So I have a, um, a pop-up uh, iron stand that I, you know, I fold, I fold the towels where they're really pretty, but that way he can just reach and pull that out. And it's not permanent. You know, it's something that you can, can utilize just for your bathroom. So there's, there's an endless amount of ways that we can add some storage to your bathroom. Cool. It just depends on your configuration. So that's a good one too, where they use like an antique cabinet there. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, head knockers, they used to be called head knockers over your toilet. We can reconfigure those. I like yeah. to bump yeah. out walls and build in cabinets to where it doesn't disrupt the flow of your bathroom, but yet it's built in to where it goes into maybe a dead space in your wall. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Cool. cool. Yeah. Oh. So the other question I had was, um, I'm not really fond of the clear glass for showers for right. two reasons. Um, you know, if there's traffic in the bathroom, I don't really. <laughs> yeah. Want to be seen? <laughs> yeah. I don't. Right. And the other is that, um, you know, water, hard water or soft water makes it yeah. to clean it. Right. Can you, so can you, um, sure. I know that's very trendy right now and it looks gorgeous, but yeah. how do you, is there another option or how do you manage that? Well, okay. I've got several options for you. Um, a frosted glass is, is popular um, and you can do a partial. So if you wanted the door to be clear, you know, and, or maybe a, um, a panel there. In that picture there, on the left side, there's a fixed panel that doesn't move, and then your door swings back and forth. Yeah. So you could do a combination of a frosted glass, where you could do the, maybe the fixed panel in frosted and the door in a clear. That'll help reduce some of the cleaning that you need to do mm -hmm. on a daily basis. But... Or you can uh, do it all in a frosted glass. I've even um, done some where we do a striped frosted. In other words, they're etched a little bit where the glass is etched in kind of a diffused stripe to where it gives you a little bit of privacy where you don't see straight through it. Um, personally, I've trained my husband <laughs> and, and you know, kind of taught myself to, after you get through drying off in the shower, I just take my towel and just wipe it. And if and I found that if I do that, just every time I use the shower, I really don't have to clean my glass. Um, and then just a little vinegar and water mixture too, will take the hard water spots off. So. Great, thank right. you. Yeah. Sure. And we have a couple of comments from Facebook Live. Uh, Georgia loves the painted footed tub and um, she's dreaming of remodeling her. Uh, bathroom and uh, she yeah. loves the bold wallpaper and tiny bathrooms. I know it's great and I mean that that one the last one that we showed the uh, the real bold paper there mm -hmm. yeah the, that's a mural and murals are great in the bathroom they're also great in the dining room love them in the dining room mm -hmm. um, and you know any colors you can do neutrals real real pretty uh, they're great. Oh, gosh. Maybe even in a little girl's room behind the bed. Do the wall behind the bed. Especially with florals. Florals are big right now. So endless options there. Um, go forward a little bit to, to the last slide. That, that one right there. I mean, that's, that's a pretty wallpaper, but there's other wallpapers, too, that use a lot of the metal um, uh, iridescent finish to it. I would look for some of those if you're really interested in wallpaper 
because um, when that's paired with your metal finishes in your bathroom, it's it's really it, it's a nice statement, especially in the powder bathroom, and using mm -hmm. that dark paint in a powder bathroom, it's nice, real nice. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Feel free to ask. You've got Amanda here to ask. I'll try. I, I just, I was going to go back to the pink. I really love the pink. Yeah, I know. But that, I mean, that's stunning. Mm -hmm. I have a client right now that um, her favorite colors are pink and turquoise. Ooh. And they look beautiful together. Yeah. So we're working through her house to make it neutral, but yet add accents of pink and turquoise, you know. Add that pop. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, if you don't want to commit to that, pink tile, you can certainly use pink paint. Because paint's paint, you just you know, go over it. Well, and one of the things that I love is that Amanda, um, when she was working with us on remodeling our house, which we did fairly extensive um, work on the house, is that she was very, very mindful of what we could reuse and not have to replace. Um, we kept all of our cabinets and repainted them, and they're gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I, from the kitchen to the bathrooms, they're, they're just beautiful. And um, so when you're looking at doing a remodel, whether you are looking to sell your home tomorrow and you're wanting to make sure, so really in terms of, so let's say in the area of Austin where we live in Southwest Austin, there are many homes that were built in the 80s and most of them have been updated, but if they haven't been updated, you'll almost, you will certainly get the money out what you put in um, if you're wanting to get top dollar for the sale of your home. And so it's always nice to really kind of take that into consideration when you are remodeling. Um, Amanda will look at the budget that you're wanting to work with and then make recommendations based upon that. I have another client right now who <laughs> she, wants to, she would spend, I don't know, uh, several hundred thousand dollars if she could, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, you've got to be very mindful. And I, I just really appreciate that. So this right here is the cost versus value report. It's put out nationwide. If you're wanting to see um, a copy of it, feel free to connect with me. I'm happy to send it over. If you just Google it, cost versus value um, to uh, 2020, it'll come up. So here for bathroom addition, you'll see bathroom addition, remodel. So we were really talking about remodels today, not additions. You can look at the amount that you've recouped. So they're all over, um, they're all about 70%, between 60 and 70%. So looking at a general cost, of the job, uh, the resale value that you'd get out of it, and then the cost, um, cost recouped. If you're looking in the central part of the US, for Austin, you actually get a little bit more out of it. And then if you're looking uh, nationwide, we're definitely higher um, on the scale than nationwide. So it's, it's good to look at what you're doing. Um, this is uh, for a bath remodel, a mid-range, smaller job is about 20,000 and upscale remodel is about 63,000 and then the universal design bathroom remodel about 33,000. So it gives you an idea. Amanda, how do those costs play out? Does that seem fairly average for an Austin remodel? I think so. Um, honestly, I mean, <clears throat> not to say I'm cheap. I'm just, I try to be very focused on the biggest wow factor for the, for the buck and the biggest function for the dollar. Um, and something that's timeless. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, to give you an, something that just comes right to mind is I have a client right now who's wanting to sell her home and she doesn't want to spend a lot of money, but she wants to make it look up to date. She loves marble and I found a Dolomite marble for her and she fell in love with it, but the cost was pretty significant. Mm -hmm. So she has champagne taste, but we have a beer budget to work with. So we found a Dolomite porcelain and honestly I mean the bathroom is going to look just as gorgeous as it is <clears throat> as if we were to use the marble but um, another place you can save is things like your plumbing fixtures and your bathtubs and everything it's just a matter of knowing where to look what to buy what not to buy because you can make a lot of expensive mistakes too if you don't know what to buy mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of areas we can save money based on the budget so I think what I'm trying to say is you can do a great remodel. You can spend 
the $63,000 if you want to and get all the best of everything. But it's almost like those pictures about who wore it best. You can almost do the same bathroom with different finishes and maybe not spend so much and still have the greatest impact that that more expensive bathroom had. So it really does depend on the budget and what that person wants to spend. Um, I, I tell clients too, you know, it's like cabinets. I have good, better, and best. I have, I have cabinet makers that make it look like furniture where, um, you know, and then I have some that are just as good, but they know how to cut some costs and make it, make you um, the cabinet that will service what you need. So, yeah, I do think those costs are pretty average. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even just a little high, honestly. Well, based upon my experience, they're a little high. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then also, I so it was interesting. I was talking to a developer the other day, and um, he mentioned something about one of the fixtures that we have. And he said, "And where did your <laughs> designer contract?" <laughs> I was like, "Actually, um, we had a vision, and I'm pretty certain we got a, off of Overstock.com." And his like, he just yeah. he's spending so much money, and he was like, "Really?" He stopped everything. Yeah. He was like, "Overstock.com?" Like, yes, and my house looks yeah. good, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks great. It just depends on the budget. And then I have clients that will spend $4,000 on a, a light fixture. I mean, it's it's crazy. It just depends on what your value is. He's going to college yeah. soon. <laughs> I know, I know. So, And then maybe just talk us through this um, for the end. I'll just make yeah. sure we don't have any other questions. But um, I this really, to me, is just a great example of, wow, look at what it can be. Yeah, this client um, did a whole house renovation on this home, and she loves marble. And this is real marble. Um, this is a blue marble, and I think it's called um, Blue Forest. But it's, uh, it has different tones of gray in it. But And then we remade her vanity, um, and we did it, to Celia's point, we, we, I, I redid the vanity based on her needs. She needed many drawers in the middle. So we even moved her sinks out as far as we could and gave her a wide space in the center so she could have wider drawers in the center so she could store all her makeup and everything. Um, we changed the mirror out. We ran it all the way up to the ceiling. That's just a little trick you can do to make your bathroom feel bigger. Um, she liked really modern fixtures, so she chose these, the sliding over the, the bathroom sink there, and it has kind of a contemporary feel to it. And, but they're, they're still mounted on the mirror, which gives a, a just a different feel. You know, when the light's on, it reflects in the mirror and it gives more drama there. And it also gives you more light, more function. Um, of course, we added the, the shower glass doors. Um, we moved niches to where she could, it was more better for her as far as what she wanted. Um, yeah. And then I really love using the same materials on the floor, in the shower the walls, all that is the same product. It's just different shapes and sizes. Oh, wow. So the only thing she didn't want to change is her bathtub. And, you know, we didn't, so we didn't have to have that extra expense and, and pulling it and everything. Oh my so. gosh, Amanda, for the number of times I've seen these photos, I didn't even realize they're the same bathtub. Yeah, it's the same bathtub. Wow. Yeah. That's like the first thing I noticed. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I did not notice that, Celia. That's so weird. Yeah. Well, so. that's because I kept like, I don't know. It just looks so great. It does. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that, and see the white walls. And, and then what, what I love to do, too, in, is carry, since I did her whole house, and I did her kitchen and all her other bathrooms, and we even did all the flooring, um, I, I take a theme and you carry it throughout the whole house. And it brings your home together and makes it look more elevated and elegant. Um, I like what I call a, a casual elegance, where it looks clean and fresh and spa-like, but you feel like it's not too stuffy where you can go in there and just really relax. So, and I try to carry that feel throughout the house. So. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Well, thank you, Amanda. It's always a pleasure to let y'all know we have two um, upcoming sessions and we're planning to do these in uh, the next year as well. So we will focus on flooring and then paint and holiday decorations. So flooring will be Wednesday, November 4th at 7 p.m. and paint and holiday decorations um, Tuesday, December 1st at noon. Amanda, do you want to say anything about the upcoming sessions? 
You know, as far as the flooring, um, we'll go through all the different textures that you can use and different price points and styles and where to use it, the entries the, throughout the house. I mean, just all the questions that I get typically. So about flooring. Perfect. And then you can always go back and look. Um, I, Best of Austin Living Team, we do have a YouTube channel. We are posting these um, to the YouTube channel as well. So if you're sad that you missed the kitchen talk, it was really good. You're able to go back and look at that. Um, there was, it was, that was an amazing discussion as well. And um, a lot of good information there as well. So thank you, Amanda. I appreciate it very much. Yes, thank you, Christy. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And if you're wanting to get a hold of Amanda, her phone number is 512-781-2000. And then mine is 512-994-9206. If you know anybody who's looking to remodel their home, whether it's a small project or a big project, um, please reach out to Amanda. She's happy to chat with them, chat with you about um, what it is that you're thinking of doing. And if you know anybody who's looking to buy or sell real estate in Austin or the surrounding areas, and Houston <laughs> and San Antonio. <laughs> um, please give me a call. And uh, Susan Hammonds is my business partner, also my mother, and we work together. And we would love to talk with you. Amanda, anything you want to say to wrap us up? No, thank you. I enjoyed it thoroughly. So look forward to doing it, it, it again. Thank you, everybody. Uh -huh. Until next time.